But I want to talk about when we should be starting our seeds um, for the spring and summer garden. I know as a beginner gardener, it seems super overwhelming to figure that out. So let's, let's do it. All right, so the first thing you're going to need is to know when your last frost date is, um, to know when to start your seeds. You can find that last frost date by simply just Googling it. Um, and usually like farmersalmanac.com will come up and you can enter in your zip code there and it will tell you when your last and first frost dates are. Um, knowing your frost dates are especially important for short seasoned growers um, like myself. I have a really short season. Uh, I, we only have 107 days of growing uh, time in the year. And so for me, starting my seeds indoors is imperative. Um, I otherwise would not be able to grow things like tomatoes or peppers or uh, just things like that. Let's go ahead and get started and figuring out when we would start things like tomatoes or peppers. All right, so here I have um, the different pepper varieties and tomato varieties that I plan to grow this year. Um, I'm gonna be growing just this hot salsa blend. So this has a bunch of different peppers in it. I'm really excited about the habanero peppers this year. I grew some of these last year unintentionally and they were my absolute favorite. Um, the spice on these, if you like hot, these were the best, like better than jalapenos, uh, bought better than you know all the others that I I had grown. Um, I only had one plant, <laughs> which I was really sad about. Anyway, but these were my favorite. I'm gonna try to grow a lot more of these this year. So if you turn your packets over, what we're gonna be looking for is right here. This says start indoors eight weeks before your last frost date. So we are gonna start this particular seed, these particular seeds indoors eight weeks before my last frost date. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna take the frost date that, that I found online, usually on the farmer's almanac. My particular frost date is kind of later in the season. Mine's a lot later than most people's. Uh, my last frost date is June 3rd. Most people, it, their last frost date is usually mid-May. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna count back eight weeks from June 3rd. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is eight weeks. April 8th is eight weeks before my last frost date. See that I only wrote tomatoes here? And here's why. I want my my pepper plants to be a little bit larger than I normally would have them. And this packet, if you will look closely, it says, so indoors in a very warm location, eight to 12 weeks before your last frost date. So I've decided that I want to, to start these one week early. And so I just decided I will start both packets one week earlier. So I'm gonna be starting these actually at nine weeks, but that's just because I know my season. So I'm actually gonna be starting them April 1st. So we're gonna do the same thing with all of our tomatoes. These are all the tomato varieties that I'm wanting to grow this year. So um, usually you will find that your cherry tomato varieties will, will be mature a lot sooner than your uh, more of like your slicers or your beefsteak type um, tomatoes. So if we will look on the back, this says start indoors six to 10 weeks before last frost date. So I know that this is eight weeks. I'm choosing to do mine eight, at eight weeks just because I know that I want my tomato plants a little bit larger and older so that I can hopefully get an extra one or two weeks of harvest. I don't want my, my plants too big because if they start to get too big inside and I, I would have to repot them, I they start to get stressed out. Um, so I really don't wanna do more than 10 weeks, but I am going to start at eight weeks. 
Um, but I, that's just because I know my season. My season's super short. Most people have about 160 days in their growing season. I only have 107. Got about two months less than most everybody else to grow these these varieties. Um, but yeah, so a lot of times when I'm growing things like tomatoes, I actually will the like, tomatoes will just be coming on and they'll only be on for like a week or two and all of a sudden I will get my first frost of the season and kill all, it kills all my tomatoes. So um, I want to start mine about two weeks ahead of that just so that hopefully I can get an extra two weeks of production. I hope that makes sense. So these are tomatoes and peppers are usually your main things that most people are wanting to start ahead of time. Things like beans, pole beans, bush beans, uh, things like pumpkins, things like watermelon. Um, I personally direct sow. Any sort of squash, I will direct sow. Um, uh, you can start squashes and things like watermelon and um, all, all that sort of stuff. You can start that indoors i personally don't like to i find that especially like watermelon does not transplant well that's just pers from personal experience i have um started squash early um and had little starts to plant in my garden um, after my last frost date but i've personally found that i actually like to direct sow them better it's less work um and they seemed to, to do a little bit better in my personal experience. Um, but you can, if you do want to start things like squash and watermelon and uh, pumpkins and things indoors, um, you are going to want to start those um, anywhere from two to four weeks before your last frost date. Uh, things like green beans are things that you want to directly sow into your garden um, after your last frost date. Something that is similar to green beans, I don't have any right here, are peas. Peas you can actually plant directly into the soil as soon as your soil is workable in the spring. They can handle a little bit of frost. They can take on some damage, but um, I haven't really found that to be a problem unless it has been like some freak weather that comes through. Sunflowers are a really common flower that people like to grow. They are my personal favorite. I love growing sunflowers. I actually have several rows of sunflowers that I plan to grow this year because they are my favorite. But something I wanted to show you about sunflowers, especially if you have a short season, this is something that you need to pay attention to, especially with sunflowers. Um, sunflowers and tomatoes, um, I should say, is days to maturity. If you will look really closely on this Russian sunflower, days to bloom. So this is from, I planted it, I planted this seed in the soil all the way until it blooms is about 100 to 110 days. For me, that would be a humongous problem because my growing season is only 107 days. And so if I plant this, yes, I'll get a nice green stalk and maybe some buds. But by the time it wants to bloom, it only has about a week until um, <laughs> until it frosts. It, and that's if it blooms on the hundredth day. Um, so you need to pay attention to that. You need to know how long your growing season is if you are in a short season. Um, for someone that has 160 days, this is a no problem thing to grow. For me, it is a huge problem. <laughs> so, um, unfortunately, I bought these back when I didn't know any better. <laughs> now I know, and I still have these. I'll probably gift them to my, to my sister-in-law or something. And as you can tell, that's dated 2021. It's what I've learned over the last few years of growing. You learn a lot. Um... So here's another couple of varieties. There are other varieties of sunflowers that bloom much, much quicker than the mammoth, the Russian mammoth. Um, and actually I think a lot prettier in my opinion. Um, so these are a hybrid. 
Um, but as you can see, days till maturity is 50 to 60. <laughs> this is much better for me. Um, again, here's another one. This is one of my favorites. I grew this last year. I loved how tall it was. I loved the big head on it. It was gorgeous. And um, this particular variety didn't have, oh, this is what I wanted to show you. This particular variety didn't have like days to bloom, but it, it wasn't a problem. I ended up growing it and um, I didn't have a problem getting um, it to bloom in a decent amount of time. Um, what I wanted to show you on these sunflowers is, like I said, I personally don't like transplanting sunflowers. Most sunflowers do not do well being transplanted. They hate their roots being messed with. They hate it. And um, these sorts of plant, I mean, it's easy for plants to get root bound in little tiny pots, um, especially when you're a brand new gardener. So, um, but this, but you will see on some of these, these sunflower packets, it'll say dir direct sow in the spring or start indoors two to three weeks before your last frost date. I would not, would not, <laughs> even with a short season, I would never want to sow these inside. I just, in my experience, they do terribly. They do terribly. Um, but just want to show you that just so you you um, will know that some packets will say that. These are other things that I was wanting to um, start, but a lot of these, I believe you can start directly. And I think it says that on the back. Yeah, it says direct sow. So you can direct sow this after last frost, or you can start these indoors four to eight weeks beforehand. So just, I hope that this is helping you to understand when these need to be started or when you can plant these outdoors. Um, it's just to try to help you guys and I hope that it has been helpful and hasn't been too confusing. Um, that's definitely not my intention to confuse you. A way to stay organized, a lot of times I'll either make like a list, all the things that like I'll put the date and then I'll put a list of the things that need to be started that day and then I also will separate out all my seeds that need to be started that day into little baggies. So then I just grab the little baggie and usually I'll have it written out with a date on here when it needs to be done. And plus I have reminders in my phone um, when I need to have those things started. I also have it written on my calendar and my calendar and my phone, you know, all the things so that I'm not missing my dates. I am going to go ahead and go over my lighting, what I use in another video, hopefully in the next video after this one or the next one. I hope that that was helpful. I. I hope it wasn't too confusing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and link the Farmer's Almanac website on, uh, below this video so that you can enter your zip code. You can find out how many days um, your growing season is. You can find out when your last frost date is and when your first frost date is. There's also a really cool tool on there that does all of this for you, um, for your most basic varieties. Um, if you have a little more complicated varieties or more specific varieties, you might want to um, follow kind of the method that, that I showed in this video. But um, anyway, I hope that, you know, between this or that, <laughs> that you find when to start your seeds and um, as you learn your season, it'll become easier. Uh, I hope this video was helpful. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.